Hi friends, in this video lecture we learn how to predict and quantify effect of turbulence in engineering point of view. Most of the flow problems occurring in engineering life are turbulent in nature. So knowledge in turbulence is imperative for an engineer. So let's start. The million dollar question, why turbulence happens? What's the reason behind it? Well, there is no exact answer for this question. Have a look at a famous statement made by Heisenberg. So in this lecture we won't discuss why turbulence. Instead we will discuss how turbulence. What's the nature of turbulence? How we can predict and quantify it? So the first step. How I can recognize whether a flow is turbulent or not? There are three characteristics for a turbulent flow. Here they are. Turbulent flows are always three dimensional in nature. It is always fluctuating and it is always chaotic means it is full of eddies and waves. And in this lecture we will understand nature of turbulence by examining a simple daily life problem. So let's get into it. Here it is, a simple top water problem. Here in each case you are increasing the flow rate. So you can observe in first case where flow rate was minimum, flow is laminar in nature. There is no fluctuation to the flow, there is no chaos, it's a pure laminar case. In other two cases you can see effect of turbulence increases. Flow is becoming more chaotic, it is becoming unsteady or fluctuating in nature. So finding number one, effect of turbulence increases as you increase velocity of flow. Now let's do one more experiment. Here you use water as your working fluid. Now let's take some other fluid, more viscous fluid. Let's take oil. And this is the result. Here your flow rate is high, almost similar to second case. Even then the flow is not turbulent in nature, rather it is laminar. As you use the working fluid which is more viscous in nature, the chance of turbulence decreases. So finding number two, as viscosity of the fluid increases, effect of turbulence decreases. Now let's summarize these two findings together. Turbulence increases with increase in fluid flow velocity first case and it again increases with decrease in viscosity of fluid and velocity of the fluid increases with increase in inertial force the force which is responsible to accelerate the fluid so it is equivalent to say turbulence increases with increase in inertial force and it is clear that if viscosity of the fluid is low viscous force in the fluid is also low so you could also say turbulence increases with decrease in viscous force. So it is obvious from these conclusions that when ratio of these two forces are increasing, turbulence increases. And this ratio we will call as Reynolds number. Or when Reynolds number of the flow increases, turbulence increases. And for this particular problem you can simplify this equation and you can express Reynolds number like this, where d is diameter of the pipe. So Reynolds number is a criterion which defines whether a flow is turbulent or laminar. So when Reynolds number is greater than a critical value, you can say flow is turbulent. And when it is less than a critical value, you can say flow is laminar in nature. Now we will analyze the same pipe problem in more detailed way in order to gain more insight about nature of turbulence. Here we have taken a case which is turbulent in nature and assume we are giving a constant flow rate input here. So we expect velocity at outlet of the flow is also a constant with respect to time. So let's put a pitot tube in the flow and measure the velocity. And here is the velocity result, a surprising result. We expected the velocity to be constant with respect to time, but it's rather unsteady, it's highly fluctuating. This is one big property of turbulent flow, flow is always unsteady. But if you do something called averaging on this flow, averaging means you take a time interval delta t and you take average of the values in between. If you do so, you can see that the value is steady in nature. Blue line represents averaged value. And this averaging is a big concept in turbulence. So strictly speaking, no turbulent flow is steady. And you could say a turbulent flow is in steady state only if averaged value of flow variable is in steady state. And in next section we will see more on averaging. Consider this graph. Velocity variation of a highly fluctuating turbulent flow. So without any doubt you can say that such a graph is of too much accuracy for an engineer. 
Instead, something like this will be enough for him. An average graph. So we will take a close look at this on this averaging. We are examining this small portion. The red curve represents the averaged value and the blue line represents the actual value. So you could split the actual velocity into two components. One averaged component u bar and next is the fluctuating component. And if you add these two components you will get the actual value again. And the average value can be defined over a time interval delta t like this as an average of integration. And you should be careful about the value of delta t. You should be big enough to consider any fluctuations due to turbulence. In the meantime, you should be small enough to consider any unsteadiness in the flow. So you could average any value, say other components of velocity or pressure, temperature, etc. And an engineer always speaks in terms of averaged quantities if he encounters a turbulent flow. In next section, we will move into more microscopical analysis of turbulent flow. Here we will analyze shear stress during a turbulent flow. Consider this flow region. And velocity profile in this region could be plotted like this. And remember this is average velocity profile since the flow is turbulent in nature. Now let's put this profile like this in order to make the analysis easy. And what we need here? Shear stress inside these layers. And if you say shear stress in this case obeys Newton's law and it is like this this answer would be completely wrong. The reason is presence of these eddies which transport mass between the layers since the flow is turbulent. And more detailed analysis shows that the actual shear stress equation would be something like this. There should be one more time to incorporate effect of turbulence or effect of fluctuations. And this term is often known as turbulent shear stress or Reynolds stress. Physically you can represent this equation like this. The actual shear stress is a sum of laminar shear stress and turbulent shear stress. The shear stress which arises due to effect of turbulence or due to fluctuation. And this term, Reynolds stress, is a complicated one. Determination of this Reynolds stress in terms of known quantities is considered to be one of the most complicated problems in fluid mechanics. And that will be known as turbulence modeling. Before winding up the lecture, we will have a look at effect of turbulence in actual engineering device. Most of the time turbulence is favorable. It increases convective heat transfer by a huge amount due to effective mixing of different fluid layers. It obviously increases mass transfer and mixing because there are a lot of eddies and vortices inside the flow. And another finding is it reduces the drag around a body. And this is the reason why they have put a lot of dimples on a golf ball. This is to translate laminar flow into turbulent flow. Thus by reducing drag and thus by giving more range to the ball. Hope you got a pretty good introduction to the world of turbulence. And always remember, turbulence is a vast area.